is it possible in C++ to make a type non-addressable? And if yes, is it possible to retrieve the address of such a type anyways? C++ is amazing. You can do basically anything. If you're like me, you love C++ because of that flexibility. Unfortunately, it also makes it pretty damn easy to shoot yourself in the foot. In this series, I cover some special use cases of C++ and also some very weird examples and hope you learn something. Imagine this use case here. You have a class which is called non-addressable and because of C++ you can overload any operator. And any operator also includes the ampersand operator, which is usually used to retrieve the address of such an object. So in this case, you can make the address of, of operator, how is it called, the address of operator of this class private, which means that if you did, um, you will later not be able to call this operator. So here in this line where we want to retrieve the pointer, it will actually um, throw a compile error. So if we go here and we compile it, we see that we uh, operator is a private member of the class and we are not able to call it. So basically what we did is we made this class non-addressable. You cannot retrieve the address of this class anymore. But before digging now a little bit deeper into how you can retrieve the address anyways, let's find a legitimate use case of it. Because like this, it's basically just nonsense. But think about some wrapper class. For instance, a class that has a pointer to some data and also probably a pointer to some next pointer with some data, so some sort of a linked list. So for instance, here you would have the data inside and also a pointer to other. But usually if you have some sort of a data pointer, you want that the address of the data pointer is retrieved if you call this operator. And for instance, this is what is being done here. The data returns uh, or the operator returns the address of the actual data and not of the object itself. So while I probably would also hate you if you do this in productive code anyways, this is actually stuff that has been implemented. And people are smart and people do weird things. And one of the weird things is overloading the operator. So let's see this class in action. I have added here two additional uh, functions. One um, that takes a pointer of type T and the other one that takes an int star star. And we will see here that we use this ampersand operator and by using the operator, actually the int star star is being called and you can see that uh, the overload is being called and also the address. Additionally, I give out the address in the constructor just to show you where it is actually being called. And if we go here to the console and actually compile it, we see that the constructor is being called with that address and afterwards this in star star overload is called with a different address which is to uh, which is uh, somewhere later in memory because here this data pointer is later in memory than the actual class. But how do you now retrieve the address of such a type? Just imagine to have a function that is called getAddress and now we have a look at the implementation of getAddress because this is where things get fancy. This is the implementation of getAddress. What it does is it takes the argument as a reference and then it does a reinterpret cast to a const volatile char reference. So to treat it as if it would be a normal char. Then it casts away the const. Then it takes the address of that type. And afterwards it does a reinterpret type, a reinterpret cast again to a T star. So to a pointer of the original type of the argument and this actually gives you the original address of the object we can see it by calling here the function get address and if we compile this one now we see that in the constructor the address is with the 40 at the end if we call the ampersand operator we get the 48 and if we call the get address function we get 40 again, so the normal address of the object. 
The origin of this um, this function is in the boost library, so it's not something that is like really made up out of thin air, but it was really shipped as a part of the boost library and it eventually even made itself into the standard. Today you can find it in the standard library in the header of memory as standard address of and the implementation actually is quite similar to what I have shown you today. It's just that uh, there are multiple implementations based on whether it's an L value or an R value. And um, this is uh, also just uh, implementation for the standard library up to 2017. Because after 2017, um, the committee decided that this function should be a const expression, which was not implementable like this anymore because this is not a const expression and in order to make it a const expression this function actually had to be implemented in the compiler itself and you can see it if you for instance go at the clang implementation of the standard library and you see how this address of function is actually implemented you see that it's really just calling a built-in function of the compiler and nothing more which really means that this is now a core part of the compiler to retrieve the address what what is kind of interesting is basically what it means if you want to write general algorithms because you can imagine that if you write something like I don't know, like a scrambler for memory, where you say because of cryptography and security, you want to scramble the memory that an object did have. And then you want that this is available for any type, so you will template it. And the interesting part is now, if you basically use the ampersand operator, it can be that your code actually is not as general as you think because any class that will overload this ampersand operator will violate probably your vi library and probably your SDK that you're offering. So the correct choice, if you want to write really um, maintainable and really code that covers anything, is to use get address inside of your reusable classes and templates if you don't know which class will be headed in inside your template. So yeah, I hope you have learned something today. Hit subscribe if you're interested in more weird use cases of C++. And as always, enjoy coding.